Hey everybody, I'm Trisha Hirschberger, and today we're taking a quick look at three of the new NVIDIA RTX Super Graphics cards from EVGA. The Super cards are the new flagship GPUs from NVIDIA, representing the best of the best at different price tiers. The new cards include the RTX 2060, 2070, and 2080 Super GPUs. These cards are all upgrades over the previous non-Super models, so a 2070 Super is going to deliver more performance than a regular 2070, for example. Now, within each of these product designations, companies like EVGA can put out multiple specific models. So there isn't just one kind of EVGA 2080 Super, for example. There are actually 10 specific flavors of that card, from the Super Gaming to the Super FTW3 Ultra. The main difference between the different individual cards from EVGA come down to the type of cooling they use, how much space the card actually takes up in your system, and the boost clock speed you can expect, which will depend on the specific engineering of the card. There are also some differences in lighting, but with the EVGA 2080s, you're getting full RGB on nine out of the 10 cards. This model you're seeing right now is EVGA's 2080 Super XC Hybrid. It has two fans, a hybrid all-in-one cooler, and a boost clock of 1,830 30 megahertz. And yes, it has RGB lighting. Like all of the 20 series and super cards, this model is built for real-time ray tracing. And while the 2080 Super might be more GPU than the average gamer needs in many circumstances, it's a good choice if you really want to play a game like Control with all the graphical bells and whistles enabled. Real-time ray tracing still taxes GPU performance, so a top-of-the-line card like the 2080 Super XC Hybrid is a good choice if you want things to look as good as possible without worrying about making compromises to maintain decent frame rates. The XC Hybrid is also well-equipped for overclocking thanks to its robust built-in cooling and its support for EVGA's Precision X1 software, which monitors and overclocks GPUs. If you don't need everything that the 2080 Super has to offer, you can step down in price about $200 and consider the 2070 Super, which also comes in an XC Hybrid model, as you can see here. With this GPU, you're still getting an impressive boost clock of 1,800 MHz, and you're getting the same overclocking-friendly hybrid cooling, which allows you to independently control VRM and radiator fans using the Precision X1 software. This card and cooling system has been designed to run as quietly as possible with a next-gen pump, a hydrodynamic bearing fan, and other engineering upgrades. NVIDIA's official gaming benchmarks for the 2070 Super show it improves upon the previous 2070 by around 10 to 20 frames per second in many popular games when running at 1920 by 1080 resolution. It also marks a step up from the once unbeatable 1080 Ti in most cases. Now, for those of you who want an upgrade but are a bit more budget conscious, you can step down in price once more, and again, it's about a $200 difference, and take a look at the 2060 Super. This is the SC Ultra model, which sports a boost clock of 1,680 megahertz. All of EVGA's 2060 Super GPUs have the same ICX2 cooling, which relies on a base plate, heat sink, and fans to keep the card cool. EVGA's attention to cooling tech extends down to tiny details, like the raised E's on the fan blades, which the company claims create a smoother slipstream for each fan. The SC Ultra doesn't have any RGB on it, and it won't hit the same performance heights as the other super cards we've discussed. But at a current price of just $399, it's one of the most affordable ways on the market to make the leap into the latest generation of NVIDIA GPUs. For more information on EVGA's super GPUs and for current pricing and availability, check out the links in the description below.